When you're trying to find a good trainer or coach, the most important thing to look at is their experience. Nothing will tell you more about how good the trainer is than that. Ooh, yeah. you know, you're going to piss off a lot of um, people that value um, their four-year degree they spent getting their, yeah. their kinese yeah. degree or their sports medicine degree by saying that, something like that. Yeah, controversial. Yeah, no, okay, so, okay. Well, me. I mean, it, it, it is to a point because somebody who's gone through four years of schooling or more is going to feel like, wait a second, how are you going to say that, that that is less valuable than some kid who has no education who's just getting experience? Well, so, first off, I'm not saying that other uh, factors shouldn't be considered. So, I think education is important as well. Right. What I'm saying is if the, the one most important factor is experienced. Yeah, okay. So gotcha. an experienced, educated you know, coach or trainer is going to be great. But it's if you are looking at a educated coach who's got a, you know, a degree, a master's degree or whatever, and you compare them to a trainer or coach who's got an equal amount of time but as experienced training people like you mm – -hmm. The experienced person is more likely, this isn't a guarantee, of course, there's crappy people on all sides, but they're more likely to do a better job. And that largely has to do with the fact that when you're coaching, the most important aspect of what makes you successful is not necessarily the information that you know, but rather how you apply it and how you mm -hmm. help the person through the process. Like, for example, when you're talking about diet, you know, I, I, it's very easy to Google diet, how to lose weight, macros, what has proteins, what has fat, what has carbs that kind of stuff. But what's hard is to figure out how to modify behaviors, how to be consistent, how to develop a better relationship with food. That comes from experience. And the experience that you get from working with lots of different people is what teaches you that. It yeah. doesn't come from learning kind of general, you know, okay, this well, is- pattern recognition. Yes. I mean, a lot of it is really paying attention to how you need to alter and adjust and, and be able to, uh, you know, uh, appropriately apply a more successful plan, which- isn't something you technically um, are fluid with when you're learning just from books and in, in isolated kind of environments where, you know, it's it's in a laboratory setting where this is like how, you know, it, it, it is sort of laid out versus somebody that comes in with so many different variables you have to work through. You're almost more of a detective at that point. Well, the, the science and knowledge is, is very accessible to everybody now, mm -hmm. which is very different than what it was just 20 years ago where... You know, even your client could easily Google whatever it is that they're trying to find out as far as the answer. But uh, where the the experience part, and you talk about this a lot, is that that's where the wisdom comes in, right? Like, how do you take that, distill that down into something that's uh, practical and applicable to the client, and then how to implement that into their lifestyle? That's just that's practice. Right? Well, that's something that you've you've had to try and probably yes. fail at multiple times before you kind of figure it out. Um, a lot of it is, I feel like kind of what we talk about on the show, it's, you know, it's, uh, yes, the, our education, uh, and everything that we've read over the last two or three decades, right. Is, is important. I mean, we have to be able to have some, some knowledge base, uh, but really it's the, how and what we decide to communicate to the client. I think that, uh, makes it more well, effective well, as I far think as your too, coaching. As you're applying it is where all the questions come up for you to then try to pursue more education uh, to get more knowledge that you can then bring back in uh, versus like, you know, trying to learn everything and then not really knowing uh, what's going to be valuable. Or so not. let me ask you guys this then. Do you think that it's more or less important because all the information is more accessible today than it was, again, a couple decades ago. Is it more or less important to have a coach today than it was two or three decades ago? Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I think it's always been important. Mm -hmm. um, to well, that's obvious because the, the profession has been around. More but, or less? I yeah. don't know. That's a good question. Because um, sometimes I think Because that you know why? Lots of information. Okay, here, here, here's a fact now. We have access to more information today than ever before. And it's not even close. If if I had a question about something when I was a kid, I had to literally go to the library yeah. and look it up and find a book and then go home and oops, I have another question. Got to go back to the library. There was nowhere I could go. Like right now on my phone, I have access to all of the recorded information of all of human history, right? Uh, potentially. Have we seen a decrease in obesity? Have we seen an improvement in health? Have we seen more consistency with exercise? No, we've seen it go down. It's not an information problem. It's an application problem. For mm -hmm. example, to lose weight, you need to eat less calories than you burn. 
most people understand this or know this, or at least have heard this, why aren't they doing it? It has nothing to do with the information. It has everything to do with the stuff that coaches, experienced coaches bring to the table. And then I'll ask you guys this. You guys know a lot about exercise and nutrition and science around training. What percentage of all that information would you apply to yeah. the average client? Yeah. At mm -hmm. 1%? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to take the average person and, you know, there's all this advanced training knowledge on hypertrophy and fat loss and sleep. And I'm going to take like 1% of it and apply yeah. it to the individual. It's it's just, it's it's not, it's important, but the experience aspect is the most important well, thing. Well, you can almost make the case that there's more pathways for the average person today than there was two or three years ago, which means that it would probably be more necessary to have a guide today. To help sift at least? That's what I mean. Because there's so, there's, there's yeah. so, I mean, even what we see this even in, uh, with studies, like how often is like one study contradict another study. And there's so much information that's out there that it could probably become overwhelming for the average person and easily led down the wrong path because they, they think they know, but they don't. Right. Yeah. So you could almost make the case well, that it's needed. Yeah, there's more. very compelling arguments out there for um, they'll they'll extract like one piece of science that uh, they'll highlight and then you know make it very convincing that this is the only way you need to train and for um, you know nutritional pursuits like this is the only way you need to eat and you know have very good uh, evidence and support with their argument, but it's not the whole picture. Yeah. Okay. So it's no different than this, right? It's no different than the business professor who's teaching at a you know esteemed university who's been teaching business to students for a long time versus the business person who's opened and you know businesses and failed yeah, and very, succeeded very similar. yeah who is going to who's more likely to start a business and succeed and and do those things right it's going to be the person with the experience it's not the professor does that mean the professor has no value no it doesn't uh, it's they're very valuable but when you're picking a coach or a trainer, it, it, if you're when you're weighing things out, experience is the most important uh, by far. And look, we 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 trained people for a long time. We were considered among some of the most successful trainers, I guess, in our area, right here in the Bay Area, in our circle of in our 10 circle. friends. Yeah, that's how we kind of knew of each other. <laughs> <laughs> there was like ten of us. Yeah, <laughs> but but we you know we we did pretty well. We're three of the best five that we know. Yeah, Dude, we're, yeah. Like top three, yeah, out of the top, out of the four. No, but serious, all, you know, all joking aside. So we did pretty well, and we knew, and we saw people, trainers come and go, and yeah, we yeah. hired trainers to. And well, now when you hired a trainer, what was more important for you to look at? Right? Yeah, but you. So <clears throat> I actually um, remember learning this lesson. So when I first I did the same thing, I know what you're say. when I first got into management, I actually went after the. You know, I had a, I've had a PhD work for me. I had I had plenty mm -hmm. of people with their masters, and of course, lots of bachelors in science and so i i went after that like i would actually go down to the the call local college and actually look for kids that just came out with their kines or <coughs> excuse me or their sports medicine degree right and uh i tried to build a team around like the most educated trainers and really i, I sought after that because i wasn't i didn't finish my kines degree and i thought man imagine if i could find a bunch of these trainers that are far smarter than mm -hmm. i am in, in mm -hmm. the field like we're gonna be we're gonna be dominant and what happened was it, um, it was difficult, dude. It was really difficult to succeed with this this group of trainers that I had that were all really, really smart because a lot of them failed at the application process mm -hmm. later on in my career. And and this was, by the way, too, I'm, I'm like skipping over years of kind of learning this lesson, you know, over and over. But eventually I came to the conclusion I would rather have somebody with no fitness knowledge that I could teach how to train clients the way that I have learned over years of practicing all this mm -hmm. over having somebody with a master's or even a PhD in the field. Like that's how much I would rather have a, a, a trainer that I could teach mm -hmm. that that part didn't, but it took me years of like, Oh, like this maybe to be this smart guy or this smart yeah. girl. Oh, well, we keep look, trying. I don't, I don't care how, uh, you know, whether you're super educated or not, you're now the best trainers I ever worked with were train were people who trained for at least five years. It would take five years yeah. mm -hmm. for them to really get really good. Mm -hmm. And you know, here's how you know, right? You ask a trainer a question, and if they have the answer right away, and they don't answer with "it depends. depends," then you know they don't have a lot of experience. When you you know you're you know it's funny because like I remember we we interviewed like Joe DeFranco, excellent, I mean, one of the best 
trainers out there, somebody we all looked up to back in the day. And I remember he first came on the show and I would, and we heard, and we were interviewing him and he kept answering with, it depends. And I remember like, Oh yeah, of course, because he has a lot of experience working with a lot of different people. Yeah. You know, Brett Contreras would answer the same way. It depends. And that's what you hear. So oftentimes if you don't have the experience, but you have the, the knowledge or the information, then the answer is, you know, well, this is what the study shows, so here's the answer. Well, I've also found, too, that the, when I got a lot of, and by the way, too, this is just my own experience. I'm not saying this is the way it is for everybody, but what I had found is a, a, the trainers that were that had these had this education, when they would come in and they're just starting the profession, they have this education in the field, but they have no experience in the, the actual field. And sometimes it would it would get in their way. Yeah, their expectations were different. Were I I, des I should already be crushing. Yeah. Yeah. Or I know better because this is what the science says, and mm -hmm. it's like, well, we're also dealing with behaviors too, right? So well, there's, there's and a, then they don't relate to their uh, clients that are coming in, right? They talk, or they yeah, talk the, down to them, uh, and they use a lot of anatomical terms, and they, you know, it, unfortunately, they lean hard on that instead of really trying to connect and pull their client in and find out, you know, how to communicate in such a way to, to move their behaviors in a better direction. Right. When we all start, we're all insecure in a way, yeah. right? Like you, you, we, it's new, even for the educated trainer, it's still a, a new profession. Yeah. So, and their way of handling their insecurity a lot of time is to double and triple down on the education piece. Well, I'm only saying that because this was like something I struggled through initially because I did come from, you know, like, from a college degree in uh, kinesiology, and I had, you know, this understanding of uh, how everything was going to work out. Biomechanics, you know, ergogenic aids. I took all the courses, all the different things, and and ran a lab, you know, at school. And so it was a very much a, a um, you know, a science sort of an environment where everything was sort of, you know, set up so it's going to be played out, so it's predictive. But then getting into the gym setting, you threw, I threw everything out. Like yeah. it just did not work out. Now there is something though that it, where if you don't have the education where you could really get yourself in trouble. You guys remember a couple years ago I brought up that girl Brittany Dawn. You remember her? Yeah, yeah, I do. She's that, she that was fitness a, influencer. She was a fitness influencer. At, 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 well, you know, whatever, she was selling whatever online programs, means, right? So Man, she I was hate a, that term. Uh, so she was a fitness influencer, and she had a, a pretty large following, uh, and she started selling. Um, online digital programs and diets that were, you know, quote unquote custom. Uh, and what they what ended up happening was she she blew up as far as her growth, and she was selling tons of these. And it got to a place where she definitely was not making custom plans at all. She was doing these cookie cutter type mm -hmm. of diets. So I brought her up a couple of years ago because this, it made the news as a big yeah. deal, right? <clears throat> well, uh, after that, she made this like hard, like religious pivot, you know, then she began like, you know, quoting Bible verses all the time. And she kind of went that angle, uh, for her audience and like stayed away from like the nutrition, obviously advice because she got blasted. But guess what just happened? What just came in the news just like a couple weeks ago. What? So, uh, the state of Texas is coming after her and suing her because she had people that like had eating disorders and stuff that she was giving these unbelievably low calorie oh, diets. Gosh. And I supposedly hurt a lot of people that Oof. were in this position. And now wow. the state of Texas is coming after her and actually suing her. Isn't that crazy? That is yeah. insane. And really I feel crazy. like so that's an area where like in well, that's, in, that's, in, that's, in school you're they're gonna they're gonna teach you like some of the the foundational principles like legal principles that you got. Well, be two careful things. About. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna defend something for a second because. Yes, and some of the craziest shit I've ever seen prescribed came from doctors and uh, you know medical experts with my clients. I had clients on 500 calorie a day shakes, no food, yeah, prescribed by their doctor. So it's not always perfect. Now, why does experience why is experience so good? Eventually, you get found out. Eventually, this girl got found out. Like you can rip off so many people, yeah. and, but if you're a coach or a trainer for 10 years and you're successful. You're probably doing a good job, right? Yeah. It's you're not going to last ten years, and because people are going to find out, they say, "Oh, this person's full of crap," or "Look what they've done," or what. You might last a little while, but it's not like the old. Well, not days to mention you're... that it, in order for you to, make, I used to say the same thing too. I, like if I met somebody that had that kind of experience in our, but the reason why I used to say it is because there's very little money in our profession, yeah. and if you've been doing it for two, three, four, five years, and you're not making very much money, you normally bail. Yeah. Very few people. Yeah. Make little to no money in this profession and stick around for 10 years. So if you mm -hmm. stuck around for 10 years, 
many times you've figured it out, right? Mm -hmm. Or you figured it out enough to where you're still doing it. Otherwise, you'd be off doing something else. I do find it funny that she went the religious route with promotion and you know what i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of like similarities with the ability you know manipulating people through religion or manipulating through the fitness cult it's very similar well we it? saw this in that uh what was that cult oh the, the documentary documentary uh, you you turned us on to it was uh, courtney and i just finished it where they combined like weight loss uh, with being closer to, to God. Like, the like, Way Down? Was that what it was called? Oh, yeah. The Way, way Down. The yeah. Way Down. Oh, I got to watch this. It's, you, it's haven't, so, you haven't finished watching No, it? I haven't we seen watched, it Oh, you didn't watch no, it? Now, what's it on? What platform is it on? Um, I think HBO. it's on HBO. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, it's on HBO. It. it's on HBO. It's on HBO. Is that the one with the lady with the big hair? Yeah, huge yes. hair. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it was somebody uh, somebody in my DMs, which I man, I love when, when I get stuff like this, right? So I, pr I appreciate people know what we talk about, what we're interested in. Somebody sent me over. I had never heard of it. It didn't pop up. By the way, that's my 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 critique of uh, HBO. I know I I, I always kind of crap on Netflix and say that HBO and Disney are going to catch them and stuff like that. But one thing that Netflix did really really well is their UI. I mean, they're, they're all the other recommendations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the just the user interface is so user friendly. I mean, it's the, the way they categorize it and it rotates through stuff. HBO is not good like that. Like this is something that uh, you know should be yeah. kind of recommended. It wouldn't or, or, even have been in my like sphere. Otherwise, yeah, if you hadn't told me, it about wasn't. It. I had to actually go, like I couldn't even find it looking for it. I had yeah. to go to the search, put the whole title in, and then I found so it. So what did, now in this? What did they do? They combine diet with religion. So yeah. it was under that. Like protected tax free, right? So basically, yeah, it's like intuitive eating, but like they're praying in between, right? And they're like uh, trying to. It was aggressive fasting. Yeah, aggressive fasting, but making like so the spiritual side, which makes sense, but like now they're like they're programming it so it's literally part of the weight loss uh, program and the oh. structure of it, and so people would you know buy into this, and they have all these services around it, and then they give you all these rigid rules and. You know, it just becomes this thing where it becomes a really rigid form of, you know, the original doctrine. It's kind of brilliant. Okay. It's, first of all, it's. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's not the first time. They've, they, people have made diets yeah. based off of. Religion well, it was, for a long it's time. the, it's the one meal a day and you can eat as much as you want. And then all the rest of the times when you have the desire to eat, you pray, you pray it away. Because yeah. that's that's that is the. I mean, I, I can see how that strategy. Oh no, it's bad. brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it's really brilliant. Well, people because, are losing weight, you oh, know, and so it's like it's they buy into the thing, well, and then mm -hmm. she creates like this whole other version of what she views Christianity. Well, now I'm not going to defend it, but what I will say is, psychologically speaking, the most effective way to stick to an extreme diet is to make it a part of your belief system. Sure. For yeah. example, that's why it's brilliant what she did. For example. Uh, if you look at vegans, so that eat no animal products whatsoever, vegans who do it because they believe that any any kill, killing any right. animal or Anything's milking animal cruel is cruel. Like they're yeah. to that's the whole reason why they're vegans is because I believe that animals should not be treated that way at all. Their consistency is so much better than vegans who do it for health reasons. Who right. say, "Oh, I want to be a vegan because I think it's I don't want to eat meat," and they they go off all the time. And it's because it's a belief system. The mm -hmm. people who's like, no, it's hurt animals. Even if they're nutrient deficient, they show up with nutrient deficiencies. Even if it causes a problem, they'll stick to it because it's a belief system. Yeah. So you tie it to religion, and yeah, you're <laughs> you're gonna be. And consistent. I I believe both you know Brittany Dawn and this girl we're talking right now. I believe that it starts from a good place. I really do. Like I, I mean, I just that's I, I believe I want to believe. That. Yeah, but then it becomes too much about themselves. Yeah, then that's where the narcissism yes, kicks in. Narcissism right? takes over, and whatever they were promoting is completely distorted by yeah. their own ideas that that uh, come through. Yeah, I think it starts off as a good. Because think about this. I mean, uh, we haven't. I don't think I've ever told a client to go pray when these happens, but I, I have told them about trying to becoming present in the moment yeah. and realizing that this is a craving. That you're you're yeah. battling right now, and be aware of the yeah. like where your mental state is, yeah, and, and don't prayer, be distracted. And prayer is, I mean, you're being present, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a form of meditation in a sense, becoming as present as you possibly can. So, 
you know, it's it's pretty good advice to a point, right? But I think, and I and I think that's why it had so much success for the the congregation. Mm -hmm. But then I think that the narcissism takes over of like, because then she gets celebrated. She starts to get celebrated as oh, being so amazing, and look at all these people that I'm losing all this weight mm, and yeah. changing their life. I need and to start she, my own church, you know. And then it becomes that, and then you get all these people behind you. I and, thought you you have to watch it. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Why do I have to watch it's it? Fascinating. Because you'll like it. It's, I mean, it's a it's a crazy, intriguing story. It's got a there is a, a major twist to it. I just yeah, remember the girl because it gets darker and darker. The, as yes. she's like she looks like the like you know how you watch the Righteous Gems, Gemstones and <laughs> yeah. they're a parody of the yeah year. yeah yeah. It's she very much like, in that vein. Yeah, like the big yeah. hair and she's it's on. Very much. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the part of Righteous Gemstones was based off of some of her character and and that. Yeah, and what, me, yeah. They, they took that and like the televangelist and they sort of just totally. smashed it all together. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.